don't know. I mean, what do y'all think about like graffiti in galleries or museums? <laughs> There's a lot of like uh, controversy. It's been going on for so long in terms of graffiti, like real raw graffiti on the streets and galleries. If you watch the earliest movies like Style Wars, they're, you know, yeah. even from then, from the 1970s and 80s, they've been talking about how, oh, you're a sellout, you know, you know, graffiti doesn't belong on canvas, it belongs on the trains. You know, that's like a famous line. And yeah, yeah, yeah of course. I, I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, a lot of people say the same thing, you know, people have to eat, you know, people have to survive, people have to make money. And I think a lot of those people that say that maybe they haven't had the opportunity to be offered that, you know, to be offered to be in a gallery to make money, because you can be in a gallery and still stay anonymous, and still be true to your roots, you know, of on the streets and stuff like that. So I think it goes both ways in a way. Yeah, I kind of I kind of would compare it to I guess, uh, back in the day. Uh, back in the day, I'm pretty young, I'm 25. But when I like, me and my friends used to be like, oh, if you skate for Nike or this or that. And I, I guess I could just compare it to that. Like, like MQ is one of my favorite writers and he does uh, gallery stuff. Well, he'll, not, maybe not gallery stuff, but he has his own art shows. And I have never once thought anything but anything disrespectful towards that. I just, just like, he's an OG. He's just earned his stripes. He can do that. Whereas maybe someone like, let's say an Eric Costin can skate for Nike and that's completely like, you know what I mean? Like he's earned his stripes. He, if they're going to pay him a few checks, I've seen nothing wrong with that. And I don't think that diminishes him as a skateboarder, nor yeah. does it diminish MQ as a, as a graffiti writer. Right. I mean, I think like, okay, so like, let's take Style Wars because that's the one that I know about the most, right? Like you have like all these guys fucking is and whatever, like all, you know, Zephyr and I'm not going to name any of like the really ill ones because I'm just, you know, the dude with one arm. What's his fucking name? like yes. case two right mm -hmm. yeah like you know the guy that was like king of what king of style like that dude like you know okay so you have this moment where these guys are getting sanctioned walls and showing up on the gallery uh, in gallery spaces in soho right and at the same time the city is cracking down they're like creating new trains that you can't paint on they're putting the, the train old trains behind four you know, chain link or like barber, like razor wire fences with dogs and shit. This is under Koch. And like, uh, they're like trying their best to like legalize and monetize graffiti in some spaces by preventing it for the very thing that it was like its currency, which was being all city, like what a train going to all five boroughs or, or like whatever, like, you know, someone's name being known like in everywhere, right? Through the train, through all this shit. And then you have fucking Cap, right? Who's, who's like not a graffiti artist. You know, he's like, he's like a vandal. He's, he's about like, just like getting his name up over his throw ups, his Lucille Ball throw ups, like over, over these beautiful pieces. The pieces are up for like a fucking day, a burner. And then, and then he'll like go over them and destroy them. And like, I'm much more sympathetic to that approach to it, to Cap's shit, because I'm just like, yeah. Like he kind of gets, in my opinion, y'all could disagree and y'all know much more about this than I do, but in my opinion, he gets down to like what graffiti is about. And it's part, it is about getting your name out there. There is an artistry, it is about style, but it is about vandalism. It's about like, like, you know, bloody wars. It's about more, it's about antagonism. And, you know, in that respect it's also something that you can only do when you're a kid on some level you know like they, they have the style wars follow-up and they have this fucking 50 year old you know 50 year old like cap out in some fucking tunnel out in like you know yonkers or something or white plains and there are people are like oh you know who that is like you can still do it and that's cool that's dope but like in the same way for me or costin I just compared myself to costin that's insane but like you know skateboarding only means a lot the most when you're really young you know, it, it, it's like, it's sexy and rebellious and subversive because being young is sexy and rebellious and subversive. And like, when you get older, it's just like, yeah, you should get the check, you know? And I think like, as far as graffiti, so that's a long way of saying like, I'm not sure how to, how from an art historian's perspective, not an art critic or like whatever, but like, I'm not sure how it should be historicized, whether we should look at it as, um, these things were ephemeral 
And this is a, a moment in the, you know, for, like a moment in time where, where like this had, a, like art was redefined and what was considered a canvas was redefined and, and how one made art and how that incorporated branding and all these other things like was redefined. And then it got re absorbed back into popular culture so that a lot of these people became sign painters. A lot of these people come up with the, like the, the layout of a, of a boutique. A lot of these people become fashion designers. A lot of these people, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think like in the same way that Eric Hassan is a skateboarder, yes, but he's a businessman, you know? Um, I think that it's, it would be, it would be, as an art historian, it's very difficult for me to do that because my, what I study in art like is separate from today's marketplace. And I think that the tension in style wars for me with graffiti and the gallery space is like, does it mean the same thing if it's being sold, if you're doing it on canvas and not on a wall, you know, like Jean-Michel Basquiat getting his ass kicked, like for trying to protect one of the, or like seeing his doors, doors that he just vandalized as, you know, Samo or whatever, like, seeing that shit then sold for like millions of dollars without his control, like that to me pinpoints the um, conflict between like a public career as an artist and the sort of private or at least like illegal illicit career as a graffiti writer, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think luckily it doesn't have to be in a museum. Museums kind of fucking suck at presenting graffiti. So do galleries because galleries are just there to make money. If people can make that money, that's good, but I'm sure that's not like the um, core of their practice, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, Neckface still goes out and vandalizes, you know? Like even he might be art director of Baker and doing all this shit and everyone knows his face and what he looked like, you know, all this shit, but he, he's still out there doing like vandalizing. That's dope. Mm 